Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dwyron and I hope you're having a great holiday season. Welcome to 25 Days of Go. Uh, today we're going to go over another proverb that I think is really, really important for everybody to know. It's probably also one that without a doubt everybody knows and probably knows to follow without really thinking about it. But we are going to look at it regardless. And that is a lovely proverb that tells you to hane at the head of two stones. Uh, this can also be extended to uh, playing the hane at the head of three stones. Now let's take a, br a brief look at why that is in case you were not already aware of this particular proverb. For this, I don't think I'm going to set up... Uh, you know, let's do it. Let let's, set up, let's set up something. Let's just put this in the context of a game somehow, right? Let's go with dual four, four points for this one, why not? Uh, let's say we lie and change that to a 3-4 because we're going to approach maybe. And I suppose our opponent is going to pincer us wide. And maybe Black doesn't really know what to do, so decides to go ahead and attach to yield stone. Now, you could probably Hana here, but you could extend. Extending is fine. Your opponent does so as well, and now the question is what to do. Well, uh, if we play elsewhere, then we're kind of violating this and allowing our opponent to hunt at the head of two stones, because as you can see here, uh, if we hunt at the head of two stones, we create that lovely cut point. That lovely cut point allows us to do wonderful things, such as perhaps even double hunt it, because we're threatening to kill off those two stones. Um, if we even just connect, for example, which I wouldn't recommend, I, I would do the double Hane here, I think. And let's say our opponent extends out, that cut point is left behind. So that's something that we can actually take for ourselves pretty quickly if we so desire. So that kind of Aji is uh, really, really important. If we, for example, just decide uh, to back off, then maybe our opponent not feeling enough pressure here gets to, you know, settle himself and play something else. Whereas, because, uh, you know, black had played elsewhere. But if we, or no, yeah, because white played elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, there we go. If white on the other hand finds the two stones, then once again, that, oops, that's not the stone I'm looking for. There we go. Then we can see here that there's a cut point still, so things like this has to be read out by uh, black. Uh, but yeah, right now, I mean, right now we have to figure out, you know, how we're going to settle all this. We would like to say this is influent and like maybe do something here, but again, this is not really a strong position, so you might not want to do that. If on the other hand, we just back off, none of that's going to happen. Uh, maybe our opponent plays elsewhere, maybe... A, our opponent gets stronger instead. We do not have the cut points being played. We do not have the weaknesses left behind. Don't have the happy problems that your opponent's gonna have to worry about and fix. Instead, we have a very, very strong position on both sides and can't really do much there as a result. So as you can see, uh, if white gets the Hane here, it's very, very good for white because we're growing, we're getting weaknesses. If we play elsewhere and black gets it, then same thing, there's weaknesses and we're getting stronger. So playing the height head of two stones is fairly nice. And now let's completely throw away any attempt to make this into any kind of reasonable position. We can also actually see this with the height head of three. Like occasionally, 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 you'll see something along the lines of this. Something along the lines of this. And uh, now the question is what to do here if white you now plays elsewhere. Well, then we wouldn't want to just extend and allow our opponent to keep getting, you know, strength here. We would want to Hane, perhaps even double Hane in this position as well, because this is last stone is now threatening an Atari here, and it's also threatening to Right out of stones, there we go. Also threatening to go ahead and capture the two. So playing at the head of two and three stones is actually very, very, very large. Uh, a lot larger than if we instead just back off, let's say, 
and extend and don't leave any weak points behind. Not, not as much to take advantage of. I mean, you can see the difference, but like, night and day between uh, how much extra strength and how much extra weakness is left behind if you go ahead and hide that at the 2 and 3. And you can see quite clearly night and day differences between if we just extend and not do anything. So yeah, might want to pay attention to that. These uh, variations come up a lot in the first person to play away usually isn't very very pleased with themselves because it can go from this to something like this instead and the amount of strength that shifts there is just astronomical. So that is why you often see that wonderful or hear that wonderful piece of advice that you really want to haunt it ahead of two and three stones. Now the great thing about this is that this is very very straightforward, very very hard to miss so it's probably something that if you didn't know it, it'll be rattling around in the back of your head. And you'll be looking for the, those lovely shapes to go ahead and play the Hane um, at the head of. Or beware of them if you're playing them yourself and not let your opponent, you know, put you in that kind of position. So, hope you enjoy having fun with that particular proverb. Hope you've been having a great holiday season and I will of course see you guys tomorrow. Take care everyone.